and welcome to Boss Fight with Austin and Aubrey. I'm Austin. And I am Aubrey. Welcome to this, the premiere episode of our new podcast. And I say premiere, Aubrey, of course, in terms of chronological sequence, but also quality. It's all downhill from here, folks. That was a good one. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Or, you know, I don't know a whole lot about marketing, but I think saying that it'll always get better from here might help for people to come back and listen more than it does to say, this is the now, best thing now, you're ever going to hear, and Aubrey, you might as well die. Aubrey, which one of us has the communications degree? Yeah, but which one of us has the degree that's worth the value? Well, when you're from Oklahoma, neither. <laughs> that's a good point. Um, all right, so what? what is the show about? So this show is your premier game facts guide to tackling all of life's most challenging bosses, whether it's, you know, Sir Ian McKellen, whether it's a nasty dog you ran into on the street, or whether it's, you know, three tigers stacked up in a trench coat. Uh, we are here to guide you through and give you all the tips, tricks, cheats, and hacks you need to battle your way through the challenge. You know what? I, I, want, I do want to start with that three tigers in a trench coat. You do? Yeah. See, okay. So it's like nobody ever talks about this, right? Because they don't think it's a huge threat. But as soon as three tigers in a trench coat come for you, no one's going to be prepared because no one has broached this topic. Right. right. We, are, we are pioneers of the tiger trench coat menace out there yeah I, I did say this was the premiere episode we are premiering the world's first speed run strategy guide youtube compilation of three tigers in a trench coat being massively and utterly defeated here's here's my so you're you're fighting three tigers in a trench coat here's here's the issues that i see right uh, it's got it's got two forms in battle. One is the the trench coat form, right? They're all stacked right, on course, top of each time. other. You get you get up close, you know. You think you're fighting one really tall tiger, and then all of a sudden, some tiger paws come out of the trench coat and get you with the nice claw. But then, when its HP is low enough, it just turns into three into the three individual tigers. Now you're fighting three things. Now this is this is so important. You cannot let those tigers separate because when they're when they're stacked up in a trench coat, you know the bottom tiger's got a big load. He's trying to put his paws on the on the on the feet paws of the second tiger, and they're trying to hold up the third tiger. And they're they're unstable. They're wibbly wobbly. You know maybe they're going to dodge some attacks like that, but really you have the upper hand. As soon as those tigers come out of that trench coat. You have a zero point zero 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 one percent chance of defeating that boss. We cannot emphasize enough. Do not push over the tiger tower. Do not oh, do God. it. No, you can't. Don't don't think you're gonna get cheeky by going for the bottom tiger because he's the weakest. Because right. remember, tigers is big cats, and those big cats are gonna land on their feet, and then you're fucked. So so here's here's. My thought. One, you have to start with the top tiger. That one's obvious. You start with top tiger. You, right. uh, since you, you got two options, right? You just beat it right then and there until it's out of the fight, or you just kind of get rid of it overall. When you, when you knock over the top tiger, you got to make sure that it can't re-enter the fight. So since big cats land on their feet, as you so expertly said, why don't we take... Why don't we take butter and put it on the back of the tiger? Because whenever I drop things with butter on it, it's the butter that hits the ground, right? Maybe right. tiger ne tiger never hits the ground. Tiger's essentially floating in a rotation. Tiger is in constant spinning limbo because the universe can't decide which one of those sides has to land on the ground because it can't be neither. But if it's but if it's one then it can't be the other and the universe doesn't know how to handle that so you just get this this weird floating tiger blob it's gonna it's gonna look like a glitch but it's a feature okay it's a feature <laughs> it's an easter egg 
Uh, yeah. We don't know why. We don't know it from, but it's it is. It's just there. Now, uh, because because tigers notoriously have very high stealth and dexterity, you're not going to know when one's approaching, so you're not going to have the time to grab butter. So you're going to have to have an emergency butter kit on your person at all times. Right. Here's the other thing. Not only are tigers so high in stealth, but people don't know this really, but tigers are really high in charisma. And so when three tigers in a trench coat walks up to you and introduces himself as Dan, you're 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 more than likely going to believe that this three tigers in a trench coat is Dan. And and right. just because it's that convincing. So you can't just be on your feet whenever you're walking down an alley, right? Watching out for all of those alley tigers. You got to make sure that when you're in a social situation, that it isn't three tigers stacked on top of each other in a trench coat. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know, Tony, right? You know how many kids that tiger has viciously murdered with just his bare hands and a bowl of cereal? Can you imagine what three tigers in a sick slick looking black trench coat is going to do to you like i mean you you said it tigers very high charisma black trench coat that's a huge modifier on top of that like no one's ever looked at someone in a trench coat and not been like that's someone i have to know right now you know the worst the worst combo is well once you once you get rid of so many three tigers in a trench coat over and over and over again you stack up those numbers you you have that high stat all of a sudden the the big three tigers in a trench coat is Tony stacked on top of Tigger stacked on top of Hobbs. Now that's interesting that they would stack up that way because you think Tigger would be on the bottom. Yeah. That's, I, that's how they get you. That's, that is exactly how they get you. You go, oh, this whole thing's going to jump real high. And then all of a sudden it's just the top two tigers that just spring out out of nowhere it's how they do really, it's how they get yeah, you it's more of a it's more of a it's not really a, a high jump kind of pogo situation it's more of a tigger is gonna spring off his tail but Hobbs has got a hold so they're just gonna they're just gonna bound out and in and out and in and you're gonna have a hard time keeping up with that energy the best way to do that i think is to distract tony i think i think that's the best way to do it Say things like frosted flakes aren't that great, right? It'll it'll make well, him angry. Now, now be yeah, be careful. You don't want to make him too angry because then he will activate rage mode, and uh, there's no coming back from that. He's gonna hit harder. He's gonna move faster. Uh, his claws are gonna get bigger and sharper. You know, I mean. That's why you don't compare frosted flakes to other cereals. If you were to say something like, uh, Lucky Charms is superior to to frosted flakes then that that's how you hit the rage trigger that's when that happens but if you just simply say eh, they're not that great then then he's just really distracted like oh, man how do i how do i fix my formula to get this guy to like my cereal more and when he's distracted bam that's when you get him yeah because as long as his head is in the clouds his claws are not in your chest now yeah yes also spoons Ow. You know what's crazy yes, about Tony the Tiger's right. claws is that they're spoons. They're all spoons. They're not really claws. That's canon. Yeah, he just likes he likes cereal so much that he got them embedded into his fingers. He's got spoon claws. Yeah. This guy's really serious about cereal. They're very now, sharp. I, I do want to add on the flip side. If you have if you have gone up through this point and you have collected. Uh, the Lucky Charms Leprechaun as a party member, you can directly compare Frosted Flakes to Lucky Charms because, yeah, he's going to go into rage mode, but he's going to target the Leprechaun, so you're going to have free reign to get your sick combos in, right? Because yeah. he's, he's not paying attention to you. You can charge up your ultimate attack. They're not going to come for you. Tony's calling the shots, and he wants the Leprechaun. And luckily... He's he's a tank, right? Lucky Lucky Charms. I think his name is Lucky. I don't know. I'm not gonna Google it, that. Lucky it probably is, is Lucky. He he's an evasion tank, right? He's just so high in decks, he can just get away from those spoon claws at any moment. So it's it's a it's a perfect thing. Other party member that you do have the other two party members that you have to get clearly. One of them, Calvin. 
because if oh, Calvin's yeah, in the mix, then, well, Hobbs uh, turns into a, a stuffed animal at certain points. So there's that. Right. Um, wait, no. I think that if you get Calvin, Hobbs has more power. If you get Calvin's mom or Calvin's dad, then that's when Hobbs turns into a, a stuffed animal. You're right. You have to be careful that you don't bring Calvin into this fight because he will defect to the other side. Yeah. And I'm a spoiler and just, alert. He'll I, pee I that's everywhere. A big, that's a big plot point. But yeah, he will He will defect. He will piss all over your car. Uh, and, you know, it'll be really funny and it'll make a great bumper sticker. But it won't be great for you, both yeah. in terms of damage inflicted and, uh, um, you know, dignity lost. Right. You don't want to lose those dignity HP points. Uh, yeah. Third third person to to bring into your party, and and you think, well, his combat abilities aren't that high, so why would I even bother with this? Uh, but that it's Winnie the Pooh, of course. You bring Winnie the Pooh in there. Uh, you sit him in near near some kind of hole with a jar of honey, and eventually he gets. And when Pooh gets himself stuck, Tigger has to help out. That's also a good way. It's a nice persuasion check to try to get Tigger to see the error of his ways and how he just really likes helping people and bouncing. And he doesn't have to work for Tony anymore. He doesn't have to yes. work for Spoon Fingers. No, this is actually the point in the game that you can recruit Tigger to be a party member. And this is the this is the only way. It's a very specific set of circumstances you have to meet, which is why no one's ever done it before, of course. But we've locked in the inner secret if you set up everything just right, you know, Tony. Tony's trying to go with his spoons at Lucky the Leprechaun. You know, Calvin's mom has rendered Hobbs uh, just utterly useless. And you bring Pooh in there, and Tigger's the only one left. And he's going to realize you know, friendship was in him all along. I, I, don't, he's, he's I, not, I, I don't know. He's not good at articulating his feelings or thought process. He just kind of goes with it. I suppose that's true. He is. He does have a spring for a tail. It's yeah, kind of a, it's kind of a metaphor. I don't. I don't really get it all that much. But he defects. That's the. That's the important part. That's the important and thing. You can recruit him. You're gonna have a great battle if you do all of those things. Want to go for one of these questions? Yeah. So Aubrey, tell me about these questions. How all do, right. How do, how do we get questions? Oh, that's a that's a, an excellent question. So we have an email set up. It's bossfightcast at gmail.com. And we actually have a few people who have sent in questions because they're very good friends of ours and decided to do something nice so that we were prepared for our first episode. I'm I'm really digging the first two on this list. Which one do you which one do you think, Austin? The first one or the second one? You know, why don't why don't we just go why don't we just go in order? Hit me with that number. Alright, all right, cool. <sighs> Hi, Austin and Aubrey. At my place of work, there's a vending machine in the break room. Nobody else seems to have a problem with it, but two-thirds of the time I try to use it, it won't actually give me what I pay for. It has become my greatest enemy, and I plan to challenge it to a duel soon. How do I defeat this vending machine? Love, give me my snacks in Snack Romento. That's a very good name. Um, okay, so you've got a vending machine with a 33.33... Three, 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 success rate, which is not very good. The no, but here's people... here's the problem though: is that it works one hundred percent of the time for other people. It's singling out this guy. Yes, right. The way the way that this question has been phrased, Sacramento, is that this vending machine has it out for you. My first bit of advice: there are a lot of different ways to defeat your mortal enemy. Physically, you've got mentally, you've got emotionally, all those kinds of things. If you fight a vending machine physically, you will lose. Because not a lot of people know this, but vending machines are the number one leading factor in vending machine-related deaths in the United States. Really? That's an interesting fact. I, I would not have guessed that. Yes. I, the People think that, oh you know what, I'm just going to tip it over. But when you try to tip over vending machine, it always tips on, tips over onto you. It's like a cat on its feet. It's like a tiger landing on its paws. Vending machine falls on you, you're dead. 
uh, you go, I'm going to go get that snack with my arm. It just puts you in an arm bar, and you can't get it out. And then when nobody's looking besides you and the vetting machine, the vetting machine snaps off your arm. And then what does it do? It takes that arm bar and puts it in A5. Yeah. And now people are eating your arm bar. If it's really stingy, it'll take off the individual fingers and, and have the whole A row for each of your little digits. In order to get now, it back, you have to pay 75 cents, which is way too much for each individual so, finger. Yeah, so there's there's two kind of factors limiting you from fighting a vending machine physically with fisticuffs. Number one, it's a metal box, and if you do manage to get some damage on it, there are legal vandalism ramifications for your actions. Right. The more the, the more funny answer. This the second part is that if this vending machine is singling you out and has historically treated all your coworkers with with uh, mutual respect, those coworkers are going to be more likely to take the vending machine's side if a fight breaks out. So mm. you can't just punch the vending machine and expect there to be no mm. ramifications because people are going to flock and they will side with the vending machine because damn it they need their checks mix it's you you know sharon from accounting will throw down for her checks mix she is because a monster if, if becky at the front desk doesn't get her lipton she's gonna flip her lid tim that's <laughs> that's nothing that's nothing that's nothing <laughs> Cut that, cut that one for the podcast. I don't Moving. think I can. <laughs> Damn it. It was in the middle of a sentence, so I don't know if I can. All right, um, anyway. All right, so so clearly physically is, is out, out of the picture. So here's my other problem. If you try to beat it mentally, right, vending machine is machine. Machine's in the word. So it's, it's one step from robot, right, which is one step away from AI. So it's two steps removed from AI. If now, you try to depending on, where, depending on where you work, however, that vending machine could just be a robot. They have some crazy ass vending machines nowadays that will like you like point you point to what you want and the vending machine's like cool and they take out a bottle and they take out the bottle opener appendage and they snap that cap off and they hand it to you and it's all frothy cold and you're like, Thanks, vending machine. Like right. that that is some next level intelligence with and high it... functionality. With the foresight to not let you know that it knows how to fuck you up 400 different ways with that bottle opener. And that's – if you are dealing with one of those vending machines, you cannot beat it mentally. I'm not – well, you could. Here's the problem. You can. You, you beat the vending machine mentally. You say, I challenge you to a game of chess, and if I win, you always have to give me my snacks. Vending machine is like, cool, bro. I'll go for it. You play a game of chess, you beat it, you get your snacks. But guess what? Vending machine learned. And when vending machine is learned, it's, it starts the alien, not the alien. Vending machines aren't alien. It starts the robot revolution. And all of a sudden, we have robot overlords led by Sir Vending Machine because you decided to challenge the vending machine with arms to a game of chess. Yes. So, and there's also... A factor you have to to take into account that you know maybe maybe this one instance doesn't trigger the robot uprising, but it gets closer. You've defeated the vending machine, but then the vending machine is going to move on, and they're going to have to find another outlet for that rage that they feel because they've been defeated, and you're going to pass that off to somebody else. And it just continues a vicious cycle until eventually the vending machine has taken down prey slowly and steadily. No, you have to challenge this vending machine and defeat it in such a way that it is down for the count. It will never serve snacks again, or it will only ever serve all mm -hmm. the snacks. So I think the only other road is emotionally. You have to make this robot lose to you emotionally have you tried kidnapping the vetting machine's child now 
Aubrey, what is what is the child of a vending machine in this in this rich fiction you've created? <laughs> um, that's a damn good question. Partially, uh, I, uh, at uh, first I thought. <laughs> 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 yes, vending machines start off as Pez dispensers. And then what do they grow to in their adolescence? Uh well so okay, obviously you got you got Pez dispenser, then you've got uh you've got like gumball machine. Oh you've got arcade. Oh yeah shit. Then you have one of those gotcha ponds, the the things outside of Kroger. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then, and then from there it's a it's like a branching evolution you know then you get the classic modern day vending machine and then from there you might get the robotic vending machine or from the gosh upon then you might go the red box route right it just you know they're all destined for great things but different things right, so, <laughs> so we have so what you need to do is the the younger the younger the vending machine the more the more vulnerable your vending machine menace is going to be. So if you know of its Pez dispensers, then just get one of those. Use it in your office cubicle. You know, it doesn't have legs. It may have arms, but it doesn't have legs. You, you keep it in one of your desk drawers and just remind the vending machine that I've got your Pez dispenser child, and he will always give you that. Unless it yeah. breaks out in a fit of rage and then murders you, but vending machines aren't like that, so. No, but so yeah, you have to, you have to walk a fine line because right, you can you can eventually get to a point where you trigger that vending machine to start its fiery rampage. So you just kind of you gotta you gotta balance it. You can't you can't be too mean to the Pez child, but you do have to let the vending machine know that you are still in charge. So you go up to order your snack. You're like, hmm, I'm not myself because I'm hungry. I need me a Snickers. So you click B5, and the vending machine's like, I don't think so. You're getting C4. And you're like, oh, I guess that's fine. I also have these Pez I can chow down on. And then you it open. turns out that C4 was literally C4, and it blows up the entire office building. And then, and then, and then, and then it's then it's a hard reset on a lot of people's lives, and that's not fair to them. So you got you to gotta contain this. Yeah. You can't press C4 on a vending machine, people. Just don't do it. No. Here, alternatively, because like the other problem is that vending machine clearly likes everybody else in your office, right? So if you actually, instead of going for Pez Dispenser, you keep Pez Dispenser on, like, retainer or whatever the term is to where you have it as a backup. But what you do is you get the child that's one of those um, – it is a like a mini gumball machine, you know what I'm talking about, but the lid comes off. Oh yeah. And you yeah. you you fill it with like M and M's or likes, and you just let everybody know that they can use that whenever they want in order to get their M and M fix. Now all of a sudden, it's not just you that's doing this to the vending machine. Everybody in the office is doing it to the vending machine. You're all on equal footing. And in a sense. You have become the vending machine. Yeah, so the fourth way, besides <laughs> physically, mentally, and emotionally beating the vending machine, is esoterically defeating the <laughs> vending machine by <laughs> rising above it. So yeah. that is – that. I think we've cracked that code. I <laughs> Wait, Aubrey, I've just had a realization. And that is – well, let's, let's look at all the factors very carefully. The vending machine is only targeting you. What yeah. did you do to make the vending machine view you as its enemy? What if, Snacramento, you are the villain? Oh, man, that's the greatest reveal in this game that we've had so far. It's great. You never, you never expect it's gonna be you. Of all, it's a real. That's a real Tyler Durden right and there. You just, and you just kidnapped his child. You fucking monster. What's wrong with you? That's what I'm saying. It was him the whole time. The vending machine is holding down. He's a last bastion, saving that office Ugh. from your immature and childish ways. You want to fight a vending machine? Grow up. <laughs>
<laughs> you know what? Maybe, but what what did Sacramento do? That's what I'm saying. What what could possibly have happened that a vending machine, the most peaceful and loving and nurturing snack dispenser? Did you bring you your own done? snacks? He must have brought his own snacks. Oh, you can't. Di- you know what? You know what he did. It's not. It's not that he brought his own snacks. Like vending machine gets it. Some people need an M and M fix, but some people like their carrots. You know, that's mm-hmm. fine. Did you walk by the vending machine and go, oh. mmm, carrots, yummy, yummy, mmm, because that's a big no-no. <laughs> I mean, you shouldn't <laughs> you shouldn't say it like that. That's just taunting. That's and, on you, Snackramento. And every other time he, he walked by, I have to get my ranch dressing out of the refrigerator. Excuse me, vending machine. Oh, just let me fit through here. You know here. the vending machine just went through a bad breakup with the refrigerator. How I could know. you bring that up? Oh, you're the worst. Did you did you stand in front of the microwave and, and block block his block vending machine's view of the microwave because you know that now after this bad breakup that microwave and vending machine are starting to have a thing and you know that did you ever use it did you just stand in front of them blocking its view Ugh. did you like did you like press all the buttons like on purpose so that the vending machine would see you pressing all of microwave buttons oh my gosh Probably went up to the vending machine and ordered E4 over and over and over again. But everybody knows that E4 hasn't been stocked in months. Literally, literally pushing vending machine's buttons. The vending machine is trying his best, Sacramento. Goddamn. American icon vending machine. It'll always be in our prayers. Goddamn patriot. God. Beautiful. Does that help? That help. Okay, cool. So, you know, right. become look one with, with the vending look machine. Within, look within yourself yeah. and fight the vending machine within. Well, no, because the vending <laughs> machines, the vending machine's good. Find the vending machine within you and become one with it. Embrace yes. the vending machine of your and of your dispense, own soul and dispense joy and happiness and skills. <laughs> Fucking give everybody Skittles. Just everybody you can find. And that'll make up for all of your crimes. Do you want another question? You know what? I think we've got time for another. All right. Cool. Uh, Dear Austin and Aubrey, there's an asshole centaur that lives in my backyard. He says he'll only leave if I defeat him in battle. Help. That's from half horse, half man, all evil in Minnesota. Ugh. God, centaurs, right? Ugh. (laughs) Gosh. Uh, I, there's, my... there's one we you know we recently moved there's one in the neighborhood actually um luckily he doesn't live like next door but i hear he's kind of a he's kind of a dick there's a really nice family that lives next door and he lives on the other side and he's just been causing all sorts of problems yeah i mean it's it's one thing for centaurs to transform part of their house into a stable we get it you have to do you and half of you is horse so half of you needs stable like we get it. That's not that's not the problem. It's the telling everybody that you'll only eat whole wheat oats and that the hay that you get is naturally sourced, trying to make everybody feel bad about what they eat all the time. Yeah, that's the thing. Centaurs always got to tell you they're on whole grain oats. Like, you know, it's like centaurs are the vegans of the mythical <laughs> creature worlds they're always like mm, tasty whole oats and naturally sourced organic apples they always talk about how cows are their distant cousins and that drinking milk is 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 like you're drinking its cousin's milk it's real gross i don't yeah. know why it does it yeah and it's like i wasn't even drinking milk i was drinking fresca but thank you so i so i i get it this this centaur He's a dick. He's coming to your land, and he's claimed it as his own unless you stand up to him. And that's not – I mean that's not thats not fair, but you do have to do something about it. And you, you because it is a centaur, per the Geneva, per the Geneva Convention, centaurs and other mythical creatures do not fall under legal jurisdiction. So you got to play by centaurs. You got to play centaurs game. 
you know, there's no, there's no, there's no legal ramifications to his actions. So you, you are, the ball is in your court, but if you can slam dunk that ball on top of the centaur, you're never going to have any other centaurs coming after you ever again. Which brings us to how you defeat the centaur. You challenge him to a game of basketball. That's the first thing. Oh, for sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Definitely. You, you, you kind of walk up and you do the whole, and so my riddle's three. But really, it's just like, I bet you can't shoot a three. And then you take him out to the court and you, you, you just dunk on him, man. You just dunk on him. Those, those four horse legs that he has are not for upward projection. They're for no. forward projection. So you've got the upper hand there. Well, and you also have hands. I mean, and centaurs have hands. Cent- centaurs have hands, too. Centaurs have don't... hands. They, have, they just have the four legs also. Well, I don't know what I was thinking of that didn't have hands, but it's not centaurs. This is a different, this is a different thing. So, so Ari, let's 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 jump back before I said my dumb shit. Um, <laughs> now, per the rules of basketball, and I, I haven't played since you know early high school, so I'm I'm a little fuzzy on the rules. But you can't you can't pick up the ball and run with it. That's traveling. Everyone knows that. Right. Can you mount the centaur and have the ball? Is that traveling? No. Absolutely not. Okay, it's because see, because if because if you manage to get up on the centaur and literally dunk while on the centaur, that's a game winner. That's the golden snitch, right? Now that, get that's, up that's on the easier. centaur's back. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> get up on the centaur's back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. But so now you're right. Whole grain notes absolutely key to a centaur's heart and to mounting it but the other way you can do it and you have to be very careful because centaurs are very picky about their produce is that you can get apples because you know how horse do apples you can't just be a centaur and get away from that that horse apple relationship you might think okay of course of course you have to do organic you have to do locally sourced you have to do you know american made and bred and grown and, and whatever but everyone knows red delicious is a garbage apple like, no one eats Red Delicious. They just look nice. They taste bad. Red Delicious is stupid. Don't give a centaur Red Delicious. That is the rage trigger. And, that's, you, and you're lost from there. Because that, that's, that's when he pulls off the great sword off of his back with it. That's when that happens. Yeah. And yeah. now, again, that's not legal in basketball, but he's a centaur. And like I said, per the Geneva Convention, there's no legal ramifications for those actions. So you have to keep that sword sheathed. He can so what get you do, diplomatic immunity. Right, yeah, yeah. Mm. So but so you have to choose your apple very carefully. So obviously Red Delicious is out. And you might think, you know what the best apple is? Honeycrisp. Like super, super crisp, great flavor, perfectly balanced. Cent- do not give that to a centaur. Oh my god, centaurs fucking hate do honeycrisp. Do not. Oh my and, god. And, you know, and you know what it is. It's because they they really do like the taste of Honey's Crisp, but because they're constantly telling you about how much they like underground music, they're gonna look at a Honey Crisp and be like, "Ugh, you like Honey Crisp? Ugh." Yeah. I prefer the. I can't. I can't. I've I've been trying for the last three minutes while we've been talking about this bit to, to come up with a good fantasy apple brand, and I I can't do it. It's, Fan, it's fantasy apple. Apple to no. How about mythic mythic apple? Mer apples. It's close to the thing I've got. Mer apples. Where, where, where apples? Uh, you know what? Okay, right, so audience, obviously by now you've heard where we slotted in the actual name, so we'll we'll just come back to that later. But then Dragon we talk, apples. Dra- uh, uh, Is that a real thing? No, it's crab apples. <laughs> you know Shit. when you think about it. Crab's pretty mythical. Crab's pretty mythical. It's, you ever, you it's ever, like a. You ever look at you ever look at a crab's claws and been like, yeah, that's natural. Yeah, like I would. My fingers aren't claws. Like, damn, that's some crazy shit. And they walk sideways. What kind of animal just decided to walk sideways? Oh my god, crabs are mythical creatures here crabs on are Earth. Creatures. That's what I'm crabs saying. You're right here first, folks. Oh wait, sorry. Oh. 
Sorry, I think National Geographic is calling me. One second. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Hello? Oh, shit. Yeah, I know. We just found out. Right? Isn't that crazy? Crabs. An interview. No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm far too busy. You're going to fly me in? To where? Oh, HQ. Okay, when? Oh, you want me to get on? Right now? But I, I have to eat. We're making... We're having soup. My wife made soup. I made crab. Aubrey, hey. Hey, Larry, you hear that? Aubrey made crab. I made crab. Yeah, that's crazy. Sorry. Yeah, that's crazy. We just, they're mythical creatures and we're just eating them. Like out of the fucking ocean. That's nuts. They had no rights. Okay, okay. You know what? I have, we're doing a podcast. Larry, Larry, we're doing a podcast. Yeah, podcast. You know, you know, podcast? It doesn't matter. I will call you back later, okay? Okay. Yes. Tell Janet I said hi. Yes. I do hope we're an apple pie. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Larry. Bye. Bye. Jesus, Larry. My God. Larry anyway, loves so, crabs a little bit too much. He, he, he's crazy about he's crazy about these crabs, but he crabs. is you know, you know, um you know, Larry S. National Geographic is very persuasive and he wants to do a he wants to do a, an interview, so um Surprise, Aubrey Jet's coming in forty to pick you up. So, oh shit! Wait, my time or your time? Oh god, uh, it's your time, isn't it? Yeah, I've missed it a hundred and ah, oh, it was an hour and twenty minutes ago. Oh, I missed it. Wow, shit. it's crazy. It's crazy how time zones work that I can get a call <laughs> about a flight that's coming to my house in forty minutes, and because you're two hours ahead, god. it's already missed you. That's oh, weird. God, that's so that's so upsetting. Okay. Oh well, you uh, want to get back to centaurs? Oh, we were talking about centaurs, weren't we? Talking about centaurs. Here's okay. the deal, though. You do have to understand that centaurs are very sensitive creatures, and so you can do a lot to offend them. And when you do, you're locked in physical combat. And I only have a few things that I can say about that. One, do not try to separate the man half from the horse half. Because, oh, dear God. Because... No. Everyone know well, I guess not everyone knows because I'm having to tell you this right now, but centaurs are like starfish. When you cut them in half right there, I mean like perfectly in half between man and horse, they, they just grow the other halves back. Now you've got two centaurs in your backyard. I did, I did think at first, and this is a common misconception, I did think that when you cut the centaur in half, the human half grew human legs and the horse half grew a horse head. That's not the case. You've got That's two centaurs. Case. You don't have that, which is which is way worse than one man and one horse. Because man sucks. Horse is a beautiful creature. Horse is gonna fuck your shit up. But you got man. Whereas now you got two centaurs. Like you cannot. That's a that's a whole hydra kind of thing. You cannot open that can of worms. Uh, it's so bad. And you know they have the same voice, but and they and they say everything at the same time. It's like their mind didn't change at all. They just do. The, it's it's terrifying. Yeah, you only ever see one centaur at a time, so you never really know that. But centaurs are a hive mind, and they're mm-hmm. they're controlled by a central a central centaur. The cen- the centaur no centaur centaur. It's, Aubrey, it's did you hear did you hear centaur? Yeah, it's centaur. Centaur. Yeah, the centaur. Rules well, that's the his. Centaurs. That's his. That's his name. I guess he's centaur the cent- centaur. And centaur centaur the central centaur. But really, Centaur, the central centaur, is three centaurs stacked on top of each other in a trench coat. Oh, and shit. And we've already gone over that mechanic, so just Oof. know that when you get to that epic boss fight, that we'll cover that later. Now, some things are best left discovered, and when the time comes, you will have to face off against Centaur, the central centaur, on your own. And because it is three centaurs in a trench coat, you, you are going to have to work a little harder, but we'll, we'll cover that another day. I think... I think that's good. We dunk dunk on the centaur. If you mess up, just know that don't split it in half. Everything else you do, well, I don't know. I honestly, I'm not that big of an expert on centaurs, but yeah, we might have to we might have to phone yeah. in a centaur expert. Shit. Yeah, actually, I think I think Larry has a. Don't call Larry, no, dear God! No, don't call no, no, Larry. No, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna see if he. I'm gonna see if I can get the number. I'll I'll I'll, I'll text him after the show. Okay, good, because he's just going to talk about crabs. All right, so let's, uh, let's, re- so let's recap. So three tigers in a trench coat. Do not separate those tigers. 
oh my god, you cannot separate those tigers. But if you've got Tony and Tigger and Hobbs, you you now have the tools in your arsenal to to tackle that menace. So that that one's down. Oh shit, we forgot the thing about the tiger part. You catch the tiger by its toe, right? Catch the tiger by its toe. And when it hollers, do not let it go. See, that's the thing. Like, people are always talking about if he hollers, make him pay. But you just don't let him go. Like, just don't, don't let get go. To, don't, don't let him post bail. Just, Tigers just are charismatic. They're going to try to convince you to let them go. Don't no, let you're, them go. You're going to want You're going to want a lawyer present. Yeah, so that's Tiger's. A uh, vending machine. Uh, look within yourself and realize that you're the villain in vending machine's life. Vending machine did nothing wrong. Vending machine 2020. <laughs> Ugh, sorry, I'm just a little angry about the what Snackermento did to vending machine. God, you know, it, we're, 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 I can't. We'll, nope, we'll, we'll nope, address, we'll address nope, that later. Nope. Centaur. Dunk Challenge it. it. Dunk it. Dunk on C- the centaur. Centaur. Dunk it. Period. Ship it. Boom. <laughs> that's my. F- I'm putting that on a T-shirt. All right. Yeah, that's my. That's my favorite new age Nike commercial. <laughs> Centaur, dunk, dunk it. it, dunk it. All right. Well, I think that is all we have for today, folks. You can send us in questions, asking for advice for your boss fights at bossfightcast at gmail dot com, or you can hit us up on the Twitter sphere. I believe. That's right. We are at Boss Fight Cast. Uh, and in addition to sending us your questions and queries, uh, if you want to let us know about a boss fight you've recently completed and how you did it, uh, we'd love to hear about that. Uh, for instance, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I just packed all my things up and moved 2,000 miles across the country from Oklahoma City to Seattle. And this boss fight was not so much one figure, but it was more of like, the last level of a bullet hell game where I've got two whining dogs in the back seat and I'm traversing mountains. Uh, so that was a little dicey there, but we did it. We're here and we're making this podcast and you're enjoying it. So really things have worked out for the best. Oh, wait, hey, if you're like listening to this, uh, if you enjoyed this episode, please tell all the friends you know about it that you think that might be interested in it. We're poor, and why would we advertise this? It's only got one episode. So tell somebody if you liked it. If you didn't like it, don't tell anybody. Well, you can tell us. Let us know if you didn't no, like no. it. If you, if you didn't like it, let us know so we'll fix it, but tell everyone that you really liked it. Yeah, lie to people. Uh, yeah. you can, and the best way to do that is to type up that lie into iTunes on the review section and right. just say that it's the greatest thing you've ever heard. Because Give people, stars. people, people don't go on the internet and just lie. You know, people are going to take that at face value and, and they're going to see, oh, wow, this is a great show. All right. Anyway, thank you for listening. Uh, let us know, spread the love and, uh, we'll see you next time.